Okay, welcome everyone to another one of my video tutorials. And uh, I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS6 and 64 bit. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to do some. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do a mask using the pen tool. <clears throat> and what I have here, I just have this old picture of it's a radio. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a temp pen tool, which I found to be, it's if you really want to get in close and it gives you some more flexibility with doing your masking and stuff. So we'll do that. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> to start off, I'm just going to make a copy of this photo so we don't, uh, you know, un unintentionally make a mistake on the original photo. In this case, I really don't care, but you may have a valuable client photo where you don't want to really uh, make a mistake or something, whatever. So well, a, good, a good way to start is just go ahead and save your photo as a PSD file in case you have to uh, go get up and do something else. You can go ahead and save it, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop. I was going to call it Radio PSD. This is just a uh, good practice to do this in case you want to back up and... Uh, you know, undo whatever you did. So anyway, the pen tool is right over here. It's actually a vector tool, and it can be used to draw vector lines and uh, vector images. But we're going to use it here. I'm going to illustrate how you can use it to um, to make a selection, which you can turn into a mask. And it's uh, a quite flexible way of doing things. So you just hit P you're on your shortcut key, and you can zoom in. You can use your scrubby zoom here. And uh, if you want to rotate, rotate your image around like so. But anyway, you just take your pen tool and you just start making your lines. Now this is very similar to the magnetic lasso, although the magnetic lasso is real sticky. So this doesn't stick, but this allows you just a lot of uh, a lot of control over what kind of what your selection is going to be. And say for here we got a very straight line so we only need we might need one more point there, right there in the middle. And there and there. And so you just go around here and you uh, click, you make your points, and uh, you can always undo if you're a little bit off. You can just click in here, and you can get in real close, you can just zoom in here, and you can hold down the space bar for the hand for the, for the, uh, to move the image around. And once you go back to your uh, shortcut, your P, it will go to the last point, so you can pick up from there. And just keep masking around here. And what I like about this, you can really take your time and get really close with it. But I'll show you what really makes it a, an awesome way to do a mask. Uh, one way to make selections, a mask or a selection, whatever you want to call it. But we're just moving along here, making our points. And right here, there. And you can get up here with these, there's some, there's going to be some details here. I'm going to double, un, undo on that. <clears throat> but I'll show you how you can uh, get in and really get close on your details. Uh, you, you, this would be a little more difficult with the uh, wand. And it might be a little more laborious with the uh, magnetic lasso. And so uh, you can get in here, these little ridges here. Let's put some points there. So I want to get around this antenna, like so. And of course, as your lines get straighter here, you don't need me as many points. And what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, holding on the space bar and then get the little hand, so you can move along. Just move along real quick here, real quickly here. And we don't really have a lot of curvature here, so we don't need, need as many points. As we do is when we get to a point like that, you might want to need some additional points. Now you got a little detail here. You can come in here and get in real close. And just up here where it curves around. And you see there's a shadow there, so I don't want the shadow. And we're just going to bop around that. And then we get back down here and we're back down to a few points. And here. Here, here. Just kind of move along here you know, real quickly. Holding down the space bar tool and dragging. And just keep doing that. Now you get down here, we got the ridges again so we can go in and get some detail. Like so. Just click 
pluck those off. And now we get down here. Things kind of straighten out. And of course, you can uh, individually select the points. So if you're a little bit off, you can uh, take your white arrow, which is your direct selection tool, and then go back to your pen tool. So you can uh, always go back and move points around if you need to. And I'm just going to keep going around here. You can kind of go rough, and then if you want to go back, take your direct selection tool and straighten it up. You can even go in if you like, and uh, it's under the pen tool to convert point and make this into a curve. And, uh, you know, really get it in there and snap it in there really good. And go back to your direct selection. If you want to get a really close, you know, make a vector curve in there, really close, you can do that. Now and just go back to our pen tool. P is a shortcut. You can get in here and really get close. That's what I like. And of course, it takes a little time to do this, but when you're really making, say you might be working on an important image and they want a really close selection, you got a lot of flexibility here. I'm going to go back to my white and pull this out just a tad. Over here. Right here. We might even want to pop this into a curve. This point here. And I pull it out and then go to your white. Pull it back in. Get it in there really close. We're going to go back to our pen tool. <coughs> and uh, well, we got a curve here, so yeah, it's close. But let's see, we'll get another curve down there. So we'll do this one here. And uh, we'll convert. Maybe we can get the white selection tool here. Which you can go in and add one by doing the add anchor. So you can add another anchor point in there. Pull it out. And you can just, you know, you can really uh, get in close. Zoom in. Go back to your direct selection. Pull this curve up real tight. Any way you like it. I mean, you can really get in super close there. Really do very accurate selections. Let's see here. Let's uh, have to control Z on this. Control Alt Z will take you back an additional step. We'll go back to our pen tool. And pick up where we left off. Just by clicking on the point. I, I think I might have skipped a point was creating a gap there. Now we're going to zoom back out here. <coughs> and keep adding the points. And a little straighter here. Now we can zoom out and see what our progress is now. We're almost there. Almost ready to close the gap. Do our scrubby zoom. Pick up our pen tool and just keep adding points. Add here. And that closes it. Okay, so now, now we've got this uh, <coughs> selection here. And if you go down and choose the path selection tool <coughs> and right click on it with your uh, Wacom pen, you say make selection. So now you got the selection. Alright. So we want to apply the selection to this copied layer here. We just go in here, and uh, what I want to really show you is you can go in here and before you actually make your alpha or your mask as it's called, you can uh, go ahead and do your selection. and you can just refine edge, and this is really handy. Now once you go to the refine edge, it's got a view option here, and you can view this on white, on black, uh, as the marching ants as they call it, let me zoom out here. Or zoom there. We're going to say cancel, so we can uh, zoom out. Control minus. Pull it down. We can get it. You know, we can see it. <coughs> of course, we can uh, rotate our canvas back like we had it previously. Yeah. You know. Now we can go up here and select and refine edge, and that's what I want to show you. So you can, uh, you got, you got your, you hadn't even made your mask yet, but you can go in here and make refinements. You can. Look at it several different ways. You can look at it as an overlay, like you were doing a quick mask. Uh, you know, several ways here. And of course, there's some adjustments here. 
Uh, let's see, we'll go to the white. And we'll feather it a little bit. You can change your feathering up a little bit. And now you can view it as black and white. And this would be your alpha, actually. You see there's a slight blur around there, so that's a little feather in there. So anyway, we're going to say that's good. And uh, we still have our shape up here, which is our initial selection. So you can always go back to it and reapply the mask if you want. That's what I mean by your flexibility. Uh, you can go up there and make further refinements and then reapply it. So we'll just go down here and you can go down to this button down here, which is uh, make the mask. And now you've got your mask made there. So what I was trying to do here is I'm trying to eliminate it from this background. So just to be keep things non-destructive, we can just make another copy of it. And uh, we go to this here. And you go over your with your Wacom tablet. You right click on your mask. Say apply layer mask. You can hide these other two layers. And now you have this radio isolated from the background. And of course I want to get it standing up. Like so. And now I could go in here. Add another layer. And pull it down. Just say fill that with, uh, with this foreground color which is beautiful gray. And so we got this isolated image. It's got a really nice clean mask. And anyway, uh, that's what I just want to show you. And so uh, good luck with your Photoshop. And I'm always uh, trying to make some other things to show you. So uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. And uh, I'm out of here.